Yeah, uh, I mean, I asked the question, where's the best place? And they were like, KK, Patagonia. <laughs> those were like, the, like, go there. <laughs> those are the key words. KK, Patagonia, yeah. Bush, like, go there. <laughs> Hello, friends from Patagonia Bush Pilots. I'm uh, Seke known as the drone pilot here at Patagonia Bush Pilots. And today we're doing a special episode uh, called Under the Wing, uh, specifically for uh, student pilots here in, pa in the Patagonia Bush Pilots uh, flight school. Today, our first uh, student for the interview for episode one, Under the Wing, is Max. And Max comes from France. So we have international students coming here. So Max, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. What about you? <laughs> thanks for having good. me. Good. Good. I'm uh, glad to uh, have you. And by the way, Keke's not here. He's actually flying. Uh, so I'm doing the interview uh, on, on his behalf. Um, beautiful day today, actually. We've got a couple of uh, snowy mountains. Yep. It was yep. beautiful. It was rainy. And, and now we get to see a little bit of the snowy mountains that uh, the, the sign of winter is coming. Yeah, it's getting a bit colder here. Yeah. So it's, it's better for flying. We got the exam in like next week. Yeah. And the colder the air, the better the plane flies. So that's actually a good thing. So better condition, <laughs> better conditions for the for the exam. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Good. So, Max, um, let's let, let me begin a little bit about um, how, how what inspired you to get into aviation um, uh, and, and then why you decided to go forward and become a pilot? Yeah, sure. Um, so it was sort of a dream at the back of my head for a long time. Uh, it's the sort of thing that, you know, you, you, you want to do it, but also it's a bit distant. And like, I didn't have close friends who were pilots. Um, so it was, you know, for for a very long time was some, something in the back of my head and um, and yeah and I have a fully remote job uh, mm -hmm. thanks um, and I was thinking you know would it be possible to fly um, early mornings uh, before I work mm -hmm. um, and yeah, actually, I, I made the calculations and it would work. Uh, so yeah, I came here. So like any family, no one knows a pilot? Uh, or My grandfather was a pilot. Your grandfather? Um, yeah, uh, but he he passed away when I was younger. Uh, so he never actually took me flying. Yeah. He was a pilot, uh, like, a, like a private pilot, more like a... Uh, uh, as a hobby or or did he was he in, in the in, in the, the air for in the air yeah. in the air, air force army in okay France, yeah. okay so you have a history of a flight uh, family uh, yeah so you have a background yeah but i never saw him fly or He's he never took me or anything really. and you have pictures perhaps pictures I have of old pictures yeah yeah uh, and actually plane that looks a lot like this one yeah. okay like the piper yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And then you said uh, no one close to you, like friends or anybody close as friends like, has? I have like friends of friends who did it yeah. um, and told me about it. Um, uh, but yeah, no close friends or anything. Um, mm -hmm. So, so and you know, it's, it's like, it takes a lot of time, it takes energy, um, and it's obviously expensive. So yeah, it was like a distant dream. Um, and I realized that, you know, if I don't, go for it it's never going to happen so yeah right. so w when you like when you took flights for instance like you got into an, an airplane maybe with your family or something w were you the one that always wanted the w the window seat yeah absolutely yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah for sure uh you wanted to see this you always wanted to see the scenery like you like being able to stick your head out and just seeing the or like watching that maybe being next to the wing maybe uh because you like to see the structure or yeah, and I'm an engineer, and so like understanding how it works is like fascinating for me. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, and I love like hiking in the mountains, getting amazing landscapes, uh, and flying, especially here mm -hmm. uh, in in Patagonia, is is all about that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 it started growing into you. Like aviation was was starting to grow, and 
and by taking flights it started to grow even more and it started to you started to feel right that 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 um, that thought of flying of one day becoming becoming a pilot and like what what triggered you what was the what was the, the spark that you said one day you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna go out there and like i'm gonna push myself i'm gonna challenge myself to to become a pilot like when was that that magic moment where you decided that you wanted to do this uh, there was no magic moment. It was more like, um, you know, it, it, it was a dream of mine for a long time. And then suddenly I was like, let's actually do it. Let's uh, start talking to flight schools, get an idea of the prices, right. um, get an idea of like how long it takes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just, I just uh, started talking to flight schools. Um, I hesitating, hesitated a lot between doing it in... Um, in, in the city, mm -hmm. um, like in, in Paris or in Buenos Aires or in Canada. And, um, but I was thinking that it might be, be like more beautiful uh, to do it so somewhere with more nature, especially in mountains. Right. Um, and I was like, the, the, probably the, the most beautiful mountains in the world are in, uh, in Patagonia. So it's like, let's check out on Google Maps if I find any flight schools. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is the discovery of how you found us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, like how did you find Patagonia bush pilots in your yeah, journey? So, so initially, I, 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 I went something in Patagonia. I was like, Bariloche is the largest, <coughs> largest city in Patagonia. So it's like, let's go on Google Maps. Um, and I actually didn't find anything. Uh, there was like something, like a small... Um, air, airstrip with no info online mm -hmm. um, so I was a bit disappointed but then I was like let's talk to pilots on Instagram so I found random pilots on Instagram right who like had the Patagonia hashtag or whatever and right. I messaged them uh, like what what is the best place to fly mm -hmm. in Patagonia mm -hmm. and they told me Patagonia which pilot cool yeah because it's, it's always interesting to see like the discovery phase like how do you how you found uh like where did you start contacting first in order to then finally get here you know yeah so uh, you said you started through instagram contacting contacting pilots yeah. and then those pilots directed you in so, i guess some some way through accounts or where they told you some things and then eventually you got to patagonia bush pilots yeah uh, i mean i asked the question where's the best place and they were like kk patagonia bush <laughs> those, were, those like, were the like go there those are the key words <laughs> kk patagonia yeah. bush like go there <laughs> yeah. and so it's like uh like who is kk uh and i messaged him on instagram uh and he told me to come here and, and here i am yeah. yeah cool so uh you, you mentioned that that uh in france and then in buenos aires that wasn't your style like you wanted to more uh i guess um a mountain right like so the difference between you ending up in paris or to, to learn how to fly or you ending up in buenos aires but for you it was you said mount like you wanted to be in a in a mountainous region you wanted yep. to learn uh to fly mountain flight yeah um and, and there's mountains in france obviously but um it feels more like an adventure to do it uh far away like in argentina mm -hmm. uh, learn spanish uh yeah, so 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 it's better here. Yeah, yeah it, did you did you also contact some uh, some places in Buenos Aires? Yeah, as well. And and did, like just the deciding factor was that Buenos Aires was more city, urban, and you weren't feeling that, or or you could have ended up in Buenos Aires, but you wanted to do more Patagonia. Yeah, so so I talked to um, like five or six flight school in Buenos Aires mm -hmm. in in Moran at the south of Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're like a lot larger than Patagonia Bush Pilot. They have dozens of students. Um, here is just a handful of students right. uh, at a time. Um, and uh, talking to pilots, I realized that, you know, flying in Moran, um, like it's, it's, it's amazing, of course, but uh, it's fly you're flying over a city yeah. uh, as opposed to having mountains 360 degrees around you right um and also a, a big thing was that i have a full-time job mm -hmm. um and, and i but i work remotely um and i wanted to find a way to fly early mornings before i start working okay 
And the thing with Moran is that um, it's like an hour, uh, an hour 30 minutes away from the city center of Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. So doing that in the mornings was not uh, practical. Yeah. Um, and also what other pilots told me is that you need to wait in line to be allowed to take off. Uh, whereas here in, in Patagonia Bush Pilot is, uh, is just a, you know, a grass and gravel airstrip where yeah. you just... Um, prepare the plane and, and take off immediately. So that's a big difference, right? So going to going down that route, so now you're in, uh, you decided to come here, you're in Trevelin. So we're in Trevelin, uh, uh, Patagonia, in, Chub in the province of Chubut, south of, of Argentina. And we're in the, in, the, in the town of Trevelin. How difficult was it, since it's more like now, uh, more Patagonia, more mountainous, more nature, small, sm small town, was it difficult for you to, for you to get situated here? Maybe like housing, transportation, maybe money, your your work. Was it was it difficult for you? Maybe in the beginning, if if it was like there, you know, uh, some examples of like what what it was for you to to start off. And maybe like someone uh, that's watching perhaps has the same idea and, and really doesn't know how to start it uh, and coming to travel in. And let's say you know you're coming from from Europe, from France, and it's very different. Uh, coming from a city to something more nature. So what were your kind of like difficulties <laughs> starting off? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, I, frankly, I hesitated a lot because um, I don't know anyone. I didn't know anyone in Trevelin. Yeah. Um, I've lived in large cities uh, all my life. So and also um, language, like, you, you know, sp like I, I, we speak Spanish, so you, you're really good with the, with the Castellano. Thanks. Right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, and like, I definitely made more progress here in Trevelin because people speak less English. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, all the instructors uh, speak English very well. Uh, so, uh, you know, y you can do it fully in English. I, I don't think that's an issue really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was a bit concerned about coming, um, thanks, coming, living in a small town. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it, it, it's like a lot more peaceful um, um, and it's kind of trendy for people from the cities to go, you know, live in the countryside mm -hmm. for, for a while. Um, you feel more relaxed here, like in this type of environment from like such a, cause I come from a city as well. Uh, and it's a lot, it's noisy, it moves fast, but now you come to travel in and it's more calm. Like everything slows down, right? Yeah, but there's tons of things to do, like uh, biking, um, uh, flying, obviously, kayaking, hiking, like there's tons of things to do. Yeah. Um, also, I had a, a few friends uh, visit me here, uh, both from France and from Buenos Aires, mm -hmm. um, and they all loved it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm not going to stay here forever. I'm, I'm going to go back to, to, to the city, but, um, um, you know, there were pros and cons to coming here. Um, the pros were that um, it's incredibly beautiful to fly. Mm -hmm. um, I live um, like 10 minutes away uh, biking from yeah. here. Yeah. So um, when I want to fly, I just take my bike and I'm here in 10 minutes. Yeah, everything is kind of close, like, right? Yeah, That's and it uh, makes a huge difference, right? Because when you got to go back and forth like 40 times to do your 40 hours, yeah. uh, living 10 minutes away is, is really good. Mm -hmm. um, there's no waiting before uh, they allow you to take off. Um, um, obviously, the instructors are really, really good here. Yeah. Um, I don't know about other flight schools, but um, uh, KK Demian, there's another instructor, Martin, um, whom I haven't f flied with, but KK and Demian are really, really good instructors, mm -hmm. both on uh, like the theory um, part of it and the, the practice. Right. Um, yeah, and so coming here, um, I was a bit scared at first, but uh, it turned out to be the best decision ever. Right, you gotta di you gotta kind of throw yourself out there on, uh, to figure it out, and and then yeah. and then as you go, you you start finding what kind of doesn't work and what works, and like you said, transportation wise, everything's I, like for me, it's walking distance or maybe yeah. a bicycle. Yeah, biking uh, all around. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then as far as housing, like, st was it hard for you to found, find a, a place to stay? Uh, no. So, so KK sent me um, um, a list of um, 
like cabanas in in places that you can rent mm -hmm. and i just uh, whatsapp uh, a dozen of them until i found something so yeah you know, that was pretty easy and then you you were able to uh also do your like your remote work like you you're you're well connected you're well situated and you can do both worlds you can come here and study uh flight and then you can go back to your place and continue working and comfortably continue your life like your other life um yeah and and i work full time and i work a lot right so i i yeah. definitely need like fast internet um and a nice working environment and, right and um and and it's yeah like my work is the is the most important thing obviously so i'm able to work and then early mornings on the weekends i i i, I can fly right um and it's a perfect combination yeah yeah and how do you how's the town for you like how the people are friendly uh, everybody's uh good good uh they're informative they're they're chill like did you have you encountered any, anything anything interesting anything anything you want to share or the, the 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 thing that shocked me initially is how people leave their bikes without a lock yeah when they go gro grocery shopping yes or at restaurants yes uh because it's so safe here yeah uh, so you're just biking everywhere and leaving your bike without a lock and nothing happens i i get that i get that a lot I, everybody says like once you leave buenos aires like like grand buenos aires buenos aires and you come like here for instance traveling it, it's a completely different world yeah from from buenos aires like here yeah. you actually get to see more people relaxed <laughs> and and like you said your bicycle could be like just hanging in front of your apartment or a cabin yeah. and it'll still be there n the next morning you know it's not gonna it's not gonna be gone yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no and, and there's like super nice uh coffee shops where you can work at uh, right there's really good right. restaurants um yeah. i really recommend nicanor they have amazing um raviolis de cordero mm -hmm. um like lambs uh lamb raviolis um, yeah um yeah and so i i really love it here Yeah, cool definitely. cool 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 yeah because it's always you know people uh, want to know like the little insight of you know if i do if if there's someone that's thinking about coming you know they don't they might not know too much about the town and and what they can do once once they get here so that's good knowledge to know uh, from hands-on from someone that's that's been living here yeah and and it's it's six hour bus from bariloche mm -hmm. so you can take the bus in the afternoon or yeah there's night. buses that go around and then you have a skill which is like maybe 20 minutes if you want to go into a bigger city yeah. and it's all connected it's all connected by bus transportation systems yeah and and the plane to buenos aires is like a hundred bucks mm -hmm. um so i go to buenos aires every now and then to see my friends there yeah and yeah. they visit me i mean it's, it's not that far so so yeah so now you're in the flight school how far are you into the the education um as far as what you know what you learned what you've been training um and where where are you right now and where you, where you're heading um so i so the the course is 40 hours um, um on the plane um and i'm i think i'm missing like three or four hours before mm -hmm. the exam Mm -hmm. uh, and we have the exam next week. Uh, so they actually uh, fly an inspector from Buenos Aires to here. Right. Um, yeah, and so I'm almost done. So what's left is just, um, you know, like refining uh, the exercises. Um, uh, but yeah. I think you're, little, you're a little nervous? <laughs> I hope it's going to be all right. Um, yeah. But I heard that none of the students um in the flight school have ever um failed the exams so. yeah no it's a it's a good track the Patagonia bush pilots has a good track record or incredible track record of all the pilots all the students uh graduating uh first first round so yeah well fingers crossed so, yeah, it's <laughs> I, a good, i'm not gonna be the first i mean it's always good to <laughs> you're always have, you're gonna be nervous but but i think like i think you've learned and you, you like what do you what do you think like have you learned like do you feel You're confident enough for work from what you learned and and all the the the, the test flights you have done uh, feeling the instrument feeling the plane the knowledge like this how do you feel uh now that's this is coming up no i yeah, I, i feel uh pretty confident like uh, um uh demian and kk uh, are very good instructors mm -hmm. um 
I made a um, hundred mistakes and they corrected me a hundred times. So I think that now I'm I'm a bit more secure. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's see what the uh, inspector says. <laughs> Good. No, no, yeah. I mean, it's uh, it, when it comes down to the final the final lap, it's uh, you're always tense. But I think I think it's always when you come when you when you get into that mode. Like everything just turns on, right? Everything just uh, kind of li- yeah, lights you're, up. Yeah, you're focused. I mean, you're focused. You're like trying to fly the plane. So, yeah. so from fl- uh, from flying here, how do you how do you anticipate, uh, for instance, un- the unique terrain here in the, in the Patagonia, uh, and weather conditions of uh, impacting the flight during your training? So, like when you have trained, um, so all these training uh, flights you have done, how does the the terrain here uh, impact your your flying, for instance? Um, so we've, it's a, here it's a sort of flat area Mm -hmm. with, um, mountains 360 degrees around. Yeah. So whatever direction you're flying, you have views on the mountains. So that, so that's really good. Yeah. Um, And I kind of want to look outside, uh, and look at the mountains, but I need to stay focused on (laughs) on the plane. Yeah. Uh, and, um, in terms of wind, um, we fly mostly on mornings because mm-hmm. uh, the the wind is there's no wind on mornings and then uh, usually it um, rises throughout the day yeah yeah um and you know during my stay here we were able to fly um you know all the time except like one week every two months right there's too much wind right right yeah it just becomes too crazy yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so overall, the the I mean the the wind conditions are pretty good. I haven't flown anywhere else yet, mm-hmm. so I don't know about other um, places, other aerodromes. But um, but do yeah, you feel like good. but do you feel like here probably there's so much there's so much going on because of the terrain, the 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 temperature, the the perhaps the humidity, the pressure. Like here, there's so many I guess variables that. Um, it, it teaches you uh, more, uh, perhaps how to fly, how, like how to control the airplane versus like if you go to this like an urban area or something, and you fly in the city, like it uh, that it doesn't have as much as what it has pr- here in the Patagonia, for instance, with the wind and with the yeah yeah sort of, and it was also something in favor of um, Patagonia Bush Pilot when I was doing my pros and cons is that um, I, I'm learning I think to fly maybe in more difficult conditions mm-hmm. lately. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's a good thing for me uh, as a student. Um, but having said that, I, I haven't flown anywhere else yet. So okay. I can't really, you know, compare. Compare, right. Okay. Um, so have you encountered any unexpected challenges during your training here in the Patagonia? And, um, how, and how have you, if you have, how have you overcome the, uh, the challenge? Yeah. So uh, any situation that you put have like remembered? Yeah, sure. Um, so I mean, like f- flying from the start was challenging because you need to do so m- so many things at once. Yeah. Um, in particular, I'm not that good at multitasking. Uh, like I like to focus on one thing and then the right. next thing. Right. But when you fly a plane, you need to like. Like, uh, there's so many things yeah. that you have to like <laughs> make sure everything's yeah. moving around and yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and when you look outside, the instructions is like, look inside. And when you look inside, it's like, look outside. So it's right. like, you got to do 10 different things. But like it's all training. Like, it's all, yeah, for sure. yeah, that's yeah. the whole point. Yeah. That's what you're doing right now. So and, it's and, and once you get what you're supposed to do, then it's a lot easier to multitask. It's a know. muscle. You it's a muscle. You think about yeah. it. You just do it. Right? You just do it. So, so uh, what about, like, landing? Like, when you started, la- like, the landing training, was that, how did you feel? Uh during those those tests those flight those landing exercises um like what was the first like what was the first re- your first reaction when you do you remember like when you first started like t- like t- goes today we're gonna we're gonna do f- f- landing and you're and you're about to land like how, how what, did, what did you feel what was your like you nervous or like oh this is this is not not nervous because the instructors um have like um, a yoke as well mm-hmm. so th- th- if you do something bad they can save it's it it's an right? assistance right yeah. they're assisting you 
Um, so it's not nervous. Um, it's just trying to, um, you know, multitask and do the hot air thing as yeah. well as the uh, potencia. I like. I don't even know how to say that in, <laughs> in English. Uh, the the the, like the power. The the, power, the throttle. Yeah, the throttle. Uh, align the plane on the three axis of rotation yeah. as well as you know the altitude. Um, what about when the when the plane starts like you know when you get a little bit of the wind on the tail and then all of a sudden the plane starts going like and you're coming for landing in the beginning like when you started feeling that like the yeah. the sensation of the plane swiveling or yeah the the first time I flew my first hour here there were a lot of turbulence yeah um, so it's like whoa this is moving <laughs> and it moves a lot more than the big plane right yeah um, but it feels sort of like a boat. Like okay. I, I, I sail a little bit and, and kind of feels like a boat and you're like, uh, like driving it, right? Okay. So you, because you, you did sailing, you can, you can compare it to something like a boat, like a small Somehow, boat or? Yeah. Like a small boat, uh, but like not flat, like in 3D, right? Okay. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, and then in terms of landing, it took me a while to understand how hard I was supposed to pull on the yoke okay. at the moment when you like flare and you you're you're not supposed to touch the ground you're supposed to fly as as far, as far as you can right and it requires you to pull quite strongly on the yoke yeah it took me a while to understand that um but yeah cool and then when you felt the uh the fir like the first sensation when you touched down and then you got the plane down how was that feeling how, how did you it's a lot smoother than a large plane yeah like if you fly with the um, Aerolinas Argentinas so or like a, whatever like a bigger airline. commercial airliner. Yeah, usually they they like the they touch the ground they hit hard. quite strongly, right? And in a small plane like these, uh, it's a lot smoother actually. Yeah, so that was surprising for me. Cool. And what roles? Uh, what what role does the, does the weather here play in your flight planning process? So pr prior to to when you're doing a, uh, your planning to fly, and how do you adapt? to rapidly changing uh, conditions? Um, so I'm, I'm, before flying, I always check um, Winguru, mm -hmm. uh, which is the same um, app that people use for sailing or um, um, k kite surfing. Um, um, and yeah, if the, if, the, if the flight, if the wind is above like uh, seven or eight, or the gusts are above seven or eight, mm -hmm. um, then I I just don't fly, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then as as the course went on, then I started to fly with a little bit more wind because I was a bit more confident. Right. Um, yeah, so you just check the app and, and, and it doesn't, like it evolves throughout the day, right? So as the morning goes, there's more and more wind. Right. So you know that, but it doesn't like suddenly start to have a lot of wind, right? It's mm -hmm. like progressive so I never had any problem with that right and obviously KK and Demian um, know the area very well right so they yeah they know very well um, like when y you're supposed to let a student fly and, and when you yeah they're not going to push it they're, like they're going to probably perhaps test you on to for you to know but but they're cor they'll correct you if there's anything like that's uh, a little bit too crazy you know because they because they know the area but yeah, you're always sure, yeah, you're yeah. always planning like just how you were taught, and then uh, making sure that everything's safe, everything's sound, and, and yeah, you're absolutely. good to fly. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, security is my number one priority. Yeah, uh, and, always. And the instructors yeah. as well, right? They yeah. they're like they care about the students a lot. Yeah, obviously. yeah. And I always uh, see you like <laughs> doing the pre check, the pre check, and checking the plane always all the time. Uh, doing the 360 check, everything, the the, the wings, everything. So it's, it's a, it's a, always a process. It's always yeah, a, yeah, yeah. a thing. You have to, it's another muscle you just have to get used to, of yeah, knowing like, everything. Like, uh, like 50 things to check before you turn on the engine, and then once you turn on the engine, there's like a bunch of things to test as yeah. well. Right? It's not like a car you just turn it on and go. It's right. No, it, it's, it's not a turnkey and then you go. This is yeah. more like. Bumper to bumper checking, well, not bumper to bumper, but like wing tip to wing tip or uh, propeller to tail. You yeah, got to check yeah. everything. But you go around. <laughs> so you, you go around. You, you, you circle around the plane checking everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's a, yeah, the degree matters a lot, obviously, um, and we have good planes here. Yeah, um, and great instructors. So yeah. So go into that. Like, what is? How do you feel? What's your overall experience for the with the instructors? Like, since day one till now, and you're about to go into the um, into the exam. Uh, what was your? How do you feel? Is your overall experience with with the instructors you had? Sure. So there are three instructors at Patrick Nebush Pilot. Um, there's Kike, um, who's the owner of the place. Um, there's Demian, um, who also works at Aerolinas Argentinas. And there's uh, Martin, um, who I, you know, I've only seen him once. Um, um, so I mostly, so yeah, I flew with Kike and Demian. Um, and, you know, w we've flown like almost 40 hours together now mm -hmm. um and uh, yeah they're they're really good both on like practice and theory mm -hmm. um and we like they're more like actual friends than they feel more like friends than an instructor it's more like friend. uh yeah like a um uh down to earth uh they make you feel more comfortable like it's not robotic it's more uh, human to human uh, instructor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, like they're they're gonna like be mad at you if you do something well, bad, obviously, because they care <laughs> they care about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we do like barbecues together. Um, we everybody gets to know each other all the time. Yeah, together, yeah. And it's like um, it's like and because this the flight school is very small, um, mm -hmm. uh, you have like a. A special relationship with the instructors, obviously. Right. Um, and it's not like other flight school where you, where you change instructor all the time. You right. It's a really with the same people. It's not a revolving door. It's like very, very uh, one on one. It's uh, you get to know the instructor. The instructor gets to know you more, so you get to spend more time with them. Right. Yeah. And and you get to learn a, more with them. Yeah. And and yeah. and like whenever I'm bored or I'm I'm over with work. Just take my bike and come here, and we drink mate and chat with them. Yeah. yeah, like I, I like when you guys like, for instance, like <laughs> there's a whole thing where, like with the other student, like you come and you guys are 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 sitting down and solving a problem, like and and you're going back and forth. Like that's good. That's good to to have. Like being able to communicate if there's like some kind of question you're concerned. Like it's not that um, perhaps you're googling or something. Like you're able to communicate it with the instructors, with the people here, and um, you're getting more of a one-on-one -on -one than, 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 than something you can just find online. Like you want to know more of someone that has more experience than just Googling it or something. Yep. You know? Um, yeah. There you go. Uh, and like, I mean, I, I, I haven't been to any other flight school, so I can't compare, but uh, they were always able to have a very precise answer to any of my questions. Right. Right, right, right. So now that you're again, you're going into the uh, into the exam, and uh, hopefully uh, you do a great job, because I know you will. <laughs> um, what do you envision uh, applying the skills and knowledge you're gaining from training here at Patagonia Bush Pilots uh, for your future flying endeavors? Sure. So I want to um, I want to fly with more wind. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to learn how to land with floats. Okay. Um, I want to, like, I'm not in a rush. Like, I'm going to do that slowly. Mm -hmm. um, um, ultimately, maybe become a flight instructor. Okay, okay. So you're, you're not right now. Pass the knowledge. Yeah, okay. Maybe in like 10 years or 15 years. I yeah. Know. You um, want to get your feet wet a little bit and your wings up high and yeah. and do your thing and, and no like fl flight instructor <laughs> seems like a pretty nice job right mm -hmm. like especially here you're flying with insane views right um, and you're teaching something that's not super simple uh, with like theory and practice and you know, it seems like seems like an awesome job yeah yeah i think i where I, what i what i think you're you're coming from is like if you really feel the the instruction at the moment because you're learning and you're ready you're ready like trying to express to to teach the knowledge i think that's good i think you're absorbing a lot of good knowledge to then spill out to to the future uh the same knowledge you learned 
And, and I think that's valuable. I think that's a nice thing, thing to do. Not everybody could do it, but if you can, it's good to, it's good to do it. So, and then, and then anything else, like you feel, you, like do you want to keep this more, um, like more mountainous, or do you want to like try other, other flying experiences? Uh, or just, just um, like do you, like, you want to fly somewhere, like any, somewhere in the world, for instance, like, you, you, like a dream area you want to fly? Around Nice, the Nice uh, area, the what is it, the French uh, Riviera yeah, area? It's beautiful. I've been there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in the Alps, I always go in 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 the Alps. Yeah. Uh, so I need to find uh, an airstrip there. And yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right, Max. Well, thank you for uh, joining us uh, in Under the Wings, Under the Wing, first episode, and uh, good luck next week with your with your test thanks. and I hope you do amazing yeah I hope so okay thanks all right take care from uh, the Patagonia Bush Pilots world and have a great day